Hey, this is Tony C. of The Morning Rush. Here's an interview Joe Shuda did for The Rush on Cumberland's ESPN Radio. Pirates pitcher Stephen Brault joins me on The Morning Rush. Thanks for taking the time. How are things in Bradenton, Florida? Uh, well, it's raining and stormy here today, so uh, it's nice. Perfect excuse to stay inside when we're not really allowed to go outside anyway, but it's good. I was in spring training, and it was just a cloud, the speaking of bad weather, a cloud over the entire time. What was it like for you? You could sort of feel something was going to happen, then eventually when they shut it down. Uh, you know, it was weird because that day it started happening, and like things kind of started to slow down. And then all of a sudden, teams were canceling that day, but we were already playing. So uh, we continued to play, and then they basically told us partway through the game, like, hey, this is, you know, it's done. We're going to have to shut down here, but we're still going to have, like, workouts and stuff. So come in the next morning, and then the next morning we got there, and they're like, okay, never mind. We're not having workouts. We're going to cancel those, but we'll still have voluntary coaches will be here. If you guys want to stay, you can. If you want to go home, you can. And then the next day we had another meeting that was like, Okay, never mind. Uh, you can't stay here unless you're a major leaguer. And even then, we can only do 10 at a time. And now it's been reduced to, you know, we can only have up to eight people there at a time. It's crazy. It just seems like something new happened every day. We are joined by Stephen Brault on The Morning Rush. Well, let's go to a sort of lighter side. And that talks about your musical endeavors. You look back in college. How were you able to balance such a time-consuming, demanding major like music with workouts, practice, travel expectations of a college sport? A lot of, how about this, not much downtime. That's the number one thing. But also just being open and ready to kind of switch gears at any time. And a lot of times I would go straight from baseball practice to rehearsal and then out of baseball workouts in the morning and class in the day and rehearsals and baseball practice, you know, so it was a pretty constant stream of activity. But I loved it, so it was a no-brainer for me. But it was it was not easy, but it was fun. You went to that college because of the idea of music, and you really didn't. Did you expect to be drafted? No, I did not. Not at all. Once I chose a very small Division II school in Colorado, I pretty much at that point was like, all right, I'll play baseball for four more years and then, and then you know, start this music part of my life. Did not expect it at all. We are joined by Stephen Brault on The Morning Rush. Once baseball is over, do you have aspirations to perform on Broadway? And let me ask you, do you consider yourself a triple threat? <laughs> Well, uh, let's see. I would love to. I would need to go back to school for a little bit, work on my acting again, just to kind of do the refreshers. But also, I'm not a great dancer. I'm sure uh, put the work in. I could I could get to the point where I'm a triple threat, but it would take a little extra time. Music-wise, what about practicing during the Major League season? How do you do that, keep everything going? Well, during the season, you know, we have downtime. We're not constantly playing baseball. It's just when I'm at home, I kind of keep up with current musicals of what's going on right now and then also perform at home a little bit, practice, play guitar, play a little piano, whatever I have with me. Also, just sing in the shower, sing in the car, all that good stuff. Have you ever thought about composing an anthem for the Young Bucks? They had 1979, the We Are Family. There's something to think about, isn't it? The Young Bucks. You know, I'll tell you what, I don't know if I would consider myself a good enough composer to write a song that people would actually enjoy at this point, but I do love the idea. I think it's more of maybe finding a song that fits for us well, that just like the We Are Family thing. Would you rather have a number one hit record or pitch a no-hitter? Oh, I'd rather pitch a no-hitter. Think about how many people have had number one hit records and then how many people have thrown a no-hitter. It's pretty much a no-brainer. We are joined by Stephen Broad on The Morning Rush. What's your feeling about all these plans that are thrown out when the season will begin and for you guys to remain in Florida and other teams to be in Arizona, seven inning double headers playing into, you know, possibly November or December? Um, I think they're all for right now, I think they're just kind of shots in the dark, just kind of people brainstorming to possibly find a way to be able to play. But really flushing any of those plans out would be very difficult. Um, and it might honestly just take more time than just wait for this all to end and then playing as many games as we can but who knows at this point it could be a very long time till we're allowed to gather in groups big enough to actually be able to play so i think the way i see it we'll have a lot of ideas and hopefully one of them will stick and it'll actually we'll actually be able to make it pan out and actually play but i think for now we're all just we're wanting to play and we'll, we'll be ready to play as soon as possible but 
the way it looks right now is just kind of like just staying ready, staying, you know, in baseball shape and everything. And then once somebody comes up with a plan, then we'll be ready to go and we'll just hit the ground running. Are you kept up to date on a weekly basis as to what possibly could be going on? Yeah, I mean, I think just as much as basically everybody else, you know, we get maybe we get the information like a few hours earlier than other people. But most of those, you know, most of the discussions between the owners and MLBPA have pretty much come out to public. So there's no big uh, behind the scenes grand plan going on right now. It's kind of a kind of a by committee kind of thing where everybody's trying to work together and figure out a way for us to get as many games in as possible. You're an excellent hitter, and of course, the designated hitter has been brought up over and over again for the National League. What are your feelings about that? Do you think it's inevitable that it'll happen? I do. I really do, which is unfortunate, but also, like, I, I totally get it, because having nine hitters in a lineup is makes for a more exciting game than having eight hitters in a pitcher. So, I mean, I get it. I do think that being, because of those rules, being an National League manager is a little bit more of an intricate process. And I've always thought that was really cool, um, the workings of the double switch and when to pull your pitcher and when to make defensive changes and stuff like that is a lot different than in the American League. So I've always thought that was really interesting. And I do, I will be bummed if it happens um, because it's kind of a loss of a way of baseball because I think, I think we're the last league that really enforces a league to not have a DH. So it'll be kind of a bummer to see that go, but I don't know. We'll see. Some final moments with Stephen Brell, Pirates pitcher. You once said baseball is a fickle mistress. Would you explain what that means? Yeah, basically, baseball is awesome when you're doing well, and then when you're doing poorly, it's very frustrating. And the beautiful thing about baseball is that on any given day, you can be either of those guys. You know, it's not depending on the weather. It's not depending, you know, you could have your great stuff that day and just, you know, a guy hits a home run on a pitch that was a good pitch, and all of a sudden you've given up three runs. And I think that's the beauty of baseball is that when it's good, there's no better feeling in the world. And when it's bad, it's frustrating, but it's not It's not so bad that it's not all worth it for when the good things do happen. So I think it's just a really cool mix of frustration and excitement that uh, makes it so so much fun when you speak to young people do explain to them that he has a great to have aspirations to play professionally but let's face it it's a very short career there's always somebody looking to take your job wherein you have music as another career uh i more go the route of that i try to really tell especially kids that it to do more than one thing you don't have to do baseball year round you know if you have an interest in something else like I strongly suggest pursuing that because, like you said, it's tough. It's really tough to make it. But also just having multiple things in life that you can enjoy so that if something doesn't go as you would hope, like for me, if I have a bad start, my solace is music. You know, I know I can go back to that and it helps me feel better and kind of forget about what happened. So I think that being uh, multi uh, interested in multiple things at the same time can always be a good thing. Well, you look back at all these years of playing in high school, college, and in minors and majors. Do you have a funny story you can relate? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, so when I was in what this would be AAA in 2016, Stan Kyles is our pitching coach. And I told, you know, Stan and I had a very good relationship. And I, I told Stan that when I have a coach come out to me on the mound in the middle of an inning, I don't want a super intense talk because I don't have a problem with being too intense. I need somebody to come out and calm me down a little bit. And so I told him I like have, you know, joke around or something like that. And make you know, that'll help me kind of decompress a little bit. And one time I had given up double and then single and then a double. It was like four hits in a row, given up a few runs. And Stan came out to the mound and uh, I think it was Stallings came out too, who's catching. And uh, Stan just looks at the guy on second and he looks at me and he goes, Hey, how about we try missing a barrel? And uh, and it made me laugh, and it calmed me down, and I got out of the inning and it moved on. But Dan Kyle's is the best. I love that guy. Thanks for joining us on the morning rush. Let's hope that we can retire this crisis rather quickly. That's rather clever, isn't it? Nice. Well done. Good use of words. Baseball words. I like it. Thanks for joining us once again. Appreciate it very much. Yeah. No problem.